Welcome to the sixth presentation in our series on action learning. This presentation is about projects that people work on in action learning. I'm Carter McNamara of Authenticity Consulting. We're providing this series to make action learning more available and more accessible to everyone. This presentation is one in a series and they are best viewed in order, so please be sure to visit the website below for more information on the complete series as well as more information about our company. And so now, let's get started. If you've been following along with us in this series, then you have a good understanding of the overall action learning process, including different perspectives on the process and the types of results that people use action learning to accomplish. So in this presentation, we'll clarify what a project is and we'll explain the traits of the best types of projects to work on in action learning. We also review the typical sources of projects for organizations and individuals. We also touch on different types of projects and we close by showing examples of projects that people typically work on in the process. So let's move on. Project is the term used in classic action learning to describe the problem or the opportunity that an organization or an individual work on in the program. This series of presentations uses the term project, sometimes problem and priority interchangeably because action learning literature, educators and practitioners often do that as well. A hallmark of action learning is that the project must be current, real and, and very important to the client and the members of the group. You remember that the client is the person who owns the problem, that is, who really needs to have it solved. The client might be a member of the group or, or not. She might be a manager in the company that is doing action learning. Reginald Revens, the founder of Action Learning, was clear that the project should not be a puzzle. It should be, he called, a problem. He clarified that a puzzle is a challenge that has one and only one solution, no matter who completes it. It has parts that neatly fit into one place. In contrast, a problem is a challenge that might have many different solutions, but is best solved by finding the solution that is most effective and suits the nature and needs of the client. If progress is to be made toward solving the problem, then the members of the group must have strong interest in solving it, and they must have some influence over the resources that they need to solve it. Otherwise, the members are merely making recommendations for solutions and are not taking actions towards the problem, and they're probably not learning. Ideally, the project can be successfully addressed within the time frame of a typical program, for example, four to nine months. Some practitioners are very concerned about this requirement. Others believe that any progress made on the project, that is, within the time of the program, is in itself a success. These practitioners might explain that very few problems are ever permanently resolved. It's not uncommon that the nature of the project even changes during a program. For example, in a multi-project program where each member brings his or her project to work on, she might choose to get help under time management and might be thinking about taking a time management class. However, after some coaching and questioning, she might realize that the real cause of her time management problem is that she doesn't want to delegate to her subordinates, or that she doesn't trust them to even do a good job. As we mentioned, ideally, the action learning members had some influence or participation in selecting the project. That's more a matter of concern in single project programs, which typically are called in-company programs as well. The more involvement they have, the more interest, commitment, and participation they might have in addressing the project. In contrast, in multi-project programs, members usually select their own projects to work on, and thus they already are very interested in working towards a solution. There is an almost limitless number of challenges that could qualify as individual projects, ranging from intrapersonal challenges to better understand and improve oneself, to interpersonal challenges to improve how the individual understands and gets along with others. Individual projects are often addressed in multi-project programs, but not always. For example, a company might have an internal management program where members from each of the different departments join a program to improve each member's skills. Projects in regard to professional development are often seen as individual projects, but are focused more on workplace priorities. They could even be about career planning or career development or career change. They could be about improving supervisory or management or leadership skills. There can be a wide range of team challenges too, for example, to improve team decision making and problem solving. 
productivity, participation of members, learning among members, and, and team bonding and, and cohesiveness. Team-based projects are usually addressed in a single project in-company program. In process-based projects, they're, they're challenges that usually encompass more than one department, and so product development, quality management, computer systems. These are usually addressed, too, in single project programs within a company. Organizational projects are usually in regard to increasing profits, decreasing expenses, improving productivity, or increasing innovation. Projects might be, for example, to solve an organizational problem, build a team, change the culture, develop a learning organization, or cultivate more creativity and innovation. We've done projects with almost all of these in programs. Here are some examples of projects for individual programs. For example, a person might be working on a question such as, well, how can I get along better with others? Or how can I move up to the next level of management? Or, I'd really like to improve my time management. You know, I'm excited. I've been offered a new job. Should I even take it? How can I help my struggling employee in the workplace? I've done everything I can think of. Help me resolve this. Or how can I benefit most from my mentor? So you can see some of these are issues people feel stuck on. Some of them are exciting goals. And we've done projects where people addressed all of these as well. Let's see some examples of projects within organizations this time. People might come to the project and have a question such as, uh, how can we improve our team? How do we roll out the new system, such as a new computer system? How do we reduce costs? Because financially, I think we're going to be in trouble. How can we improve productivity? How can we even get plans implemented? Why are we going to do new plans when we can't implement what we have? Or a popular one is, how can we start an action learning program? Thank you for viewing this presentation, and we hope that you will go on to the next one. You might benefit from the following resources to add even more detail to our overviews of action learning. The website Action Learning Central references an extensive amount of free resources, including about the action learning process, each of its key elements, examples of action learning programs, and tools for each aspect of action learning. There's even an action learning glossary with definitions for each of the common terms in action learning. Our company, Authenticity Consulting, also is available to answer your questions or to help you in any other way. Our firm does very successful action learning groups around the world and for a wide variety of outcomes and applications. There's also the free management library at managementhelp.org. You can find resources and tools for almost any activity in the workplace, including for many of the activities in action learning. You can find more about each of these three resources by going to actionlearningcentral.com gratis and select the presentation entitled General Resources for Action Learning. Thank you.